Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you. Listen, happy Palm Sunday. We are finally here. We have made it to Holy Week. I want to let you know we are going to have a video coming out every single day this week. So be locked in. Stay locked in. This is a week of reflection. This is a week of penance. This is a week of joyous anticipation for an excellent climax that we're getting ready for, we're going to pray for, and I am going to read with you the gospel, the passion, according to John. Now we're going to start in John 12, and since it's Palm Sunday, if you don't know, Palm Sunday is a celebration in our Christian faith where we celebrate the entry into Jerusalem. This is Jesus's final entry into Jerusalem. And in a sense, it is a last hurrah before he goes to do what he actually came to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to read verse 12 through verse 19 of John 12 and that will be for context and then we're going to focus on John 12 verses 20 through 26 so let's get into it on the next day when the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem they took palm branches and went out to meet him, and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it, as is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done this for him. So the crowd was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from death, continued to testify. So the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from death, continued to testify. This was also why the crowd went to meet him, because they had heard what he had done this, that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, we know the Pharisees at this point, right? You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is a universal movement. Now this is the part I want to focus on. Now there were some Greeks otherwise Gentiles is how they would be referred to, among those who had come up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, a disciple, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, another disciple. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now, wait a second. I thought he was just being glorified with the palm branches. We'll get to that. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies... It produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. This first step that we take into Holy Week, I am calling Enter into Jerusalem. 
Here we see a beautiful moment whereby Jesus makes clear why he has come to Jerusalem. It says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it, produces, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Imagine that feeling. Reflect on it. You go into Jerusalem with this adulation, with this excitement, this anticipation of your coming. But you know the true purpose of why you're there. You know the true purpose of why you're there. And all of us have Jerusalems in our life, I feel. I feel God telling me that some people on here are dealing with Jerusalems of their own. Some people on here don't know what's coming next. Some people don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Some people don't know how much their next paycheck is going to be, if it's going to cover the bills. But he had a greater purpose at this point. Because he recognized why he was going to Jerusalem. And that was to give his life. By dying, Jesus will form a new covenant with God. The old covenant was, was formed with Abraham in the beginning in Genesis, right? This is the new covenant. Whereby all people, the Greeks and the Jews. By Greeks, this is not... Uh, sovereign Greeks, as in people from Greece, these are Gentiles, any non-Jews. All of them will be able to be saved. This is, and I think this is really highlighted well by verse 19, where it says, So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. The, the ministry at this point was becoming universal. It was touching everybody. And through this act of, you know, raising Lazarus from the dead, uh, which was a momentous occasion in the, the ministry of Jesus, he's, he's reaching a tipping point. And the Pharisees are scared. Because they just, they cannot comprehend what is happening in that lifetime. And they won't comprehend. But here's the amazing thing. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew it from the day he was born. His purpose. We're all here to find our purpose this week. And I think it's amazing, and I want to point this out. That the same people who welcome him with the palm branches... with open arms and celebration will eventually condemn him to death. Think about that. Palm fronds are used to welcome great conquerors. In other texts it shows that kings are uh, greeted with palm fronds and they ride on, on mighty horses. But he rides on the back of an ass which is a symbol of peace. Whereas horses are more intimidating, the donkey is normal, common. This is a different kind of king that we worship today. A different kind of conqueror. Because he's not conquering with fire and death. He's conquering by dying. By dying, Jesus will conquer death. So he's not inflicting, he's inflicted, and it delivers us all from eternal death. We all physically die, but eternally we are granted salvation through this act, 
this act that we prepare this week for. Now, to finish out, I want to focus on three separate verses in a row. And that's going to be verses 24 through 26. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Death on the cross is the key to universal salvation. By staying alive, he can only perpetuate the inevitable. What an act of love this is. To make, to make salvation available to everyone. It's beautiful. This is a beautiful moment. And I don't know if I could put myself in his shoes. I don't know if I could. And we'll see later on that at Gethsemane, he'll, he'll pray to have it taken off of him. But he says, God, your will be done. As in, I don't know what comes next, but I know you've got it. And I know you've got the intentions of the whole world in your mind. Verse 25, whoever loves his life loses it. Okay, focus on this. And whoever hates his life in this world, in this world, will preserve it for eternal life. I challenge you, you know, if you're, if you're not completely sold on giving your life, giving away the fleshly dri drives, the fleshly intentions that are corrupting the spirit within you, I want you to shed the sinful, lustful side of yourself and walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And that's not an easy thing to do. Because you have to be prepared to take up your own cross. We'll see that later. But we go counter to culture. Walking in this just life. Counter to, to fleshly culture. But people need to see role models like us. A lot of the teachings that I'm going to have for this week are going to focus on servitude, okay? And walking in the, in the footsteps of Jesus. Reflect on this today. In verse 26, Whoever serves me must follow me. I just said that. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. No matter who you are, no matter what background you come from, if you've struggled with addiction, if you've struggled with self-loathing, like I have, if you've struggled with depression, if you've struggled with pride, arrogance, No matter who you are, we are beautifully made. Isn't that amazing? We are beautifully made, and we are made in the image of God. We are just like Christ. You are just like Christ. We are beautifully made in every way. Friends, I want us to focus on three things as we pray today. Yes, there's homework. There's going to be homework every single day this week, okay? So get ready for that. Not difficult. You're not going to be quizzed. There's no test. But this is this is e e preparing yourself for this walk with Jesus. I want us to focus on penance, first off. Now listen, penance is not it's not seeking atonement for sins, okay? What I want us to focus on instead is those recurring issues. You know what I mean. The recurring things.
that are constantly in our heart that obfuscate and dampen the sight of the Spirit in our lives. I want us to focus on those things and pray for God to rid them from us, like a disease. If you get a cold, you take Zycam to shorten the disease. If you suffer with recurring sin, you pray for it. You pray on it. You expel it in Jesus' name. I want us to focus on reconciliation. We have seven days ahead of us, six days. I want us to focus on rehabilitating relationships in our lives. Reconcile with those you have issues with. Reconcile with those you have qualms against or vendettas or grudges against. Extend the olive branch. Show that you are beautifully made and that the person you hold a grudge against is beautifully made as well. Because they are. They are. Focus on that this week. Tonight. And I want us to focus on solemnity. This, the, the, the true weight and magnitude of this moment. Reverence for God the Father. And a recollection on just how momentous this occasion is for our church. This is not just another Sunday. This is the last Sunday before the largest celebration in our Christian life. How beautiful that is. Father, I pray for every person on this call today that they will see your face and see that they are good enough. Yes, they are. I believe that with my entire being. I'm confident in that. And I'm confident that the one who started a good thing in me will continue to see it through into the coming of Christ Jesus. I truly believe that. Father, I pray that they will take this word and sharpen it. Use it as a weapon of grace and truth. Father, we do fight a battle. We fight a battle against sin. We fight a battle against social constructs. We fight a battle against media. We fight a battle against negativity. Only we can deliver. Only we can turn those things around. It might be difficult. Give us the strength to carry our cross. Give us the strength to bear that weight. Bear that weight for others. We love you so much, God. Be with us this week as we prepare for this this blessed hope. Yeah, the blessed hope. The coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, and we pray in your name today and every day. Amen. Thank you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow. Focus on these three things. Pray on them. Penance, reconciliation, and solemnity. God bless. I'll see you.